come with me back to a memory of some more than 50 years ago when I would play stickball in my neighborhood. For you, I, I don't know if you have stickball up here, but uh, it's baseball played on a street. It's reoriented to a street. And there may be eight of us boys uh, playing. The girls would be chewing gum along the street as we were playing. And um, the one manhole cover was home plate and the 1950s Rambler would be first base and the other manhole cover would be second base and then the Keatings station wagon, they were good Catholics so they needed a station wagon, <laughs> that would be third, uh, third base and home and it's played with a stick rather than a bat and it's played with a soft little ball. Now, in this cacophonous scene, presiding over the whole thing, is Mrs. Rabinowitz, who is sitting on her stoop, that is a porch. And so she's sitting there and watching all of this activity, and generally watching the neighborhood. My mother called her, I'll slip into dialect, the mayor of the neighborhood. <laughs> she was just kind of this self-appointed, bossy, nosy little Jewish lady who would sit out there. And if this game became, became too rambunctious, if some superlatives were thrown across the street from one to another, Mrs. Rabinowitz would look at you. She'd call your name and she'd say something like, Robert, I'm going to tell you a mother. <laughs> and this would calm this whole group of teenagers down. And we continue with our game. Now, you know as well as I do, because that's not sui generis. It's not just Brooklyn, is it? The Mrs. Rabinowitzes all over our societies have retreated from their stoops, and with good reason. But I suggest to you that what holds society together, really, is something even much more than the Mrs. Rabinowitzes on their porches, day in and day out, who knew their communities, and who were known by them and respected by them, because they tell our mothers. I think that is much more potent than the array of politicians who are only vaguely known and rarely know personally the constituents and what went on. This is governance. Without government, I say without government, I don't mean that we don't need a police force and all of the rest of it, but what I'm saying is that the core of real society, lived society, is this common consensus, a common moral consensus. You know, Jesus, in the book of Matthew, is handed a coin with the intention of creating a political stir. And he turns the whole question on its head. And in doing that, in this simple little encounter, sets forth uh, a way of thinking that has reverberated down 2,000 years. He's asked, do you pay the tax? And Jesus looks and says, what's the face on the coin? You remember this, Caesar's face. And he says simply, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. You talked about Mrs. Rabinovich, and as you were telling that story, um, a reminder came of a recent issue in Hamilton, Ontario, where the CARDIS office is located, where City Council put forward some uh, regulations and bylaws limiting tobogganing um, to uh, one particular hill. And it, as I listened, it, it struck me in terms of the very nature of regulation and freedom. I wonder if you could muse out loud a little more, expand on the point of, we often think of rule of, of the sort of thing that you were doing, um, and, 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 and Mrs. Rabinovich, as restricting the freedom of the boys on the street. Yet, if I, we can, if I understood you correctly, you were sort of contrasting that sort of moral code which allowed freedom for stickball and however many variations of it, as opposed to the government, the political order that puts regulations that says, well, somebody might get hurt somewhere, therefore no one can ever toboggan. Can we talk about, a, uh, for a moment, the notion of, of the liberty, uh, the liberation and the freedom, as opposed to the imposition of a Mrs. Lebinovich? 
Well, you know, I, I think the thing is, when you look at that image of Mrs. Rabinowitz, there's a lot of governance going on there. It's not freedom in the sense of do anything. I mean, there were even rules in the stickball game. You know, the, the, you didn't have a game if you didn't have rules, if there wasn't a parameter set. It, it's no fun to go to a game and cheat. Eventually, if everybody's cheating and there's no penalty for cheating, there's no game. And it's the same thing with Mrs. Rabinowitz. Uh, she was restricting our behavior, but not because she was threatening us with arrest. And I think the difference between the kind of abstract governmental um, incentives uh, and concerns, which are reflective of human solidarity, that is to say, I don't think that people create regulations, well, maybe some do, just because they want to control people. I think they're, they're concerned about kids getting hurt. The question is, do they know the kids? And who knows the kids better? And I think that um, that hill where the tobogganing has been limited to uh, may or may not be uh, safe for those kids, but I think the parents and the kids themselves are gonna know that better. Now you're gonna get some crazy kids that are gonna go off a roof anyway. Uh, so you make a legislation, you say you can't jump off the roof. Okay, fine. I mean, eventually at some point we have to have a balance here and what I'm suggesting is that the, the more informed governance takes place at the most local levels. So, okay, let's let the police department locally say this hill is safe and that hill is not. Uh, because they're gonna know the neighbors because they're gonna hear the history of the reports of kids who've gotten hurt. 